My name is Bartosz Barlowski, and I'm here to talk about, well, all right, let's maybe start from the beginning. 10,000 hours of playing computer games. Okay, this is what the scientists are saying that uh, an average 21-year-old around the world is playing computer games. So before he gets to uh, his education, higher education, he has already 10,000 hours of playing computer games, all right? So my talk is about why getting, why getting game design into schools is important more now more than ever, all right? So, well, hi, my name is Bart, I'm a gamer. I was schooled in Canada, uh, Ireland, Egypt, and Poland. I'm a VFS graduate, it's a Vancouver Film School, and also an MBA student right now. And I also founded the site called mepi.pl which is a Polish site where you can go and learn online about game design, which is this talk, for example. Okay, so I'm a filmmaker and educator. That's how I consider myself. And I'm here to talk about a problem. The problem is engagement in classes. This is attention span problems. This is boring classes, and the question that everybody probably sometimes learns and hears is, why am I even learning this? This is this, well, the students actually are, are, are asking. So, oops, all right, we've got a problem with the presentation. We're moving on right along. Sorry, so the solution is to get game design into schools, all right? And why, well, I wanna stop here for a moment and just read out these two sentences for you two times. So one of the biggest challenges in teaching science, technology, engineering, math, is capturing the student imaginations long enough for them to see all the possibilities that lay ahead of them, all right? So using interactive tools like game engines to understand physics, math, logic, uh, spatial reasoning, probability, problem solving in an interesting and cool way that gets one step closer to our goal, which is engaged and thoughtful kids getting education, all right? So, well, uh, quickly, just a quick overview how games are evolving right now, in case you're not a gamer. Uh, there was, in 1983, when I was born, there was 8-bit games, and basically they were really hard to make, and you have to be a really good programmer to actually make a computer game. They started evolving into arcade games, and then now we have gaming as we know it. And moving right along, game design your own game. This is what's happening right now, which is, I don't know if you maybe, maybe know, but there is a trend in the, on the internet, internet right now. Uh, maybe, can I get a raise of hands? How many here are actually gamers, people that play computer games? Okay, a few hands. And how many teachers? All right, most of you probably are teachers. Okay, anyway. So, this is Minecraft. In case you don't know, Minecraft is a game where you build from blocks basic things. And this game has took off and basically conquered the internet and is even bigger than most AA titles right now like Need for Speed or Battlefield 3. And it's amazing what this game is doing for our kids because they're spending more time playing this game than anything else. And why is this game uh, unique, you may ask? Well. This game is all about making things in space. So uh, when kids used to play with Lego blocks, this is the, the game developers of Minecraft basically took these blocks and put them in the virtual world. So kids can make their own worlds, design whatever they want, and even uh, use basic logic and physics to interact with things. So, Moving right along, this is what's happening right now in the, in the game design. So game engines are getting better. That's what I, this is where, where I'm going to. Game engines are a huge business, and there's all different careers. What is a game engine, you may ask? Well, a game engine is something that runs the computer game. And this talk is about getting that you don't miss this boat. As teachers, as educators, as people who really care about children's education, take a look at these things. It's free. 
I mean, Unity is a game engine that's made free. Uh, Unreal Engine is a, also an engine that runs kind of Quake games, and you shoot around, running around in levels. And CryEngine 3 is the new big thing. It's also a new game engine that's also for free. You can just go online, download the game engine, read the documentation, and start making your own game for free. So you don't really want to miss this boat. Well, why, you may ask. Why I don't want to miss this, this boat? Because this is a boat that has different careers embedded in it. So you get careers like creative. You can be creative. To make a game, a g you have to be really creative. The game developers are one of the most creative people in the industry, you may say. They are graphic designers, sound designers, concept artists. They make 3D graphics, they make animation, they make film, all right? So moving right along, you need programmers to make a game. And these programmers, in order to actually start doing the games, have to learn the basics of mathematics, algorithm, logic, probability, statistics, and physics. So think about this. You are actually, when you ask kids to make a computer game, you actually are telling them to learn all these kind of things before they even start making the game. So it's kind of getting education like the other way around. And imagine when you uh, put in the program, in a school program, you get game design, making games as a subject. I wonder how many students would actually come to this class and how many students would miss this class. Probably not a lot because a lot of people play games. Moving right along, you get also jobs in marketing, of course. So you get concept art, 3D graphics, and animation also. And of course, management. Game design also needs managers, so producers and every project managers are all involved. Uh, I've got only three minutes left. I want to show you three game dynamics that actually can make a school a more interesting place to learn what we are actually learning. So the first is an appointment dynamic, which is a, a dynamic in which to succeed, one must return at a predefined time and take a predetermined action. So what does this mean? This means in normal life, going, getting up and, and going to school. So in order for kids to start not missing classes, maybe we should start giving them little rewards like uh, game designers do. I mean, they give for each, uh, for your participation, participation, they give you awards. So moving right along, this is the influence and status game dynamic, which also game developers use. The ability of one player to modify the behavior of others' actions through social pressure. And this is getting badges. This is actually from the game called Battlefield 3. You get badges for your achievements. So you get a class, uh, you, you get a good uh, uh, grade at your class, you get an award. I mean, these are basic things that you can actually use in the educational system to make things more interesting. That's what I'm just saying. This is my point of this talk. And the last one is really powerful, actually, used in many computer games. It's the progression dynamic, a dynamic in which success is granularly displayed and measured through the, through the process of completing itemized tasks. So this is what you would say that you would basically have in your normal classroom, where you, in order to get your grade, you have to do a bunch of things. Well, uh, big companies also use this profile, LinkedIn, they give you a kind of, for example, a profile com complete list. And uh, people will do everything to move that bar from the left to the right. And if we, get, if we start thinking about getting game design into schools, this is what we could use to get profile completeness more uh, interesting. So to sum up, I've got one minute left. There's a bright future ahead, OK? Game engines are free. You can jump in and use them anytime you want. Uh, I guarantee you, to you, if you bring up the subject of game design in, in a classroom of, let's say, 14 to 21-year-olds, or even younger guys, I have a story of an eight-year-old approaching to me and saying to me, well, I'd like to uh, try to design a game, and I know the Unreal Engine, and I was just astonished how much this young kid with big glasses knew about game design, and he's gonna be 18, and he's gonna know more than I do right now. So there's a future ahead that's really worth looking into. So moving along, I've got only 30 seconds left. Uh, I'd like to introduce to a, con a concept that school is a game, basically. 
Well, you basically level up in a school. That's one concept. You have classes and grades. You have achievement and awards. Makes life interesting. But the thing is, why uh, we should strip out the level down? Because uh, as, game, as a game developer, you don't want to make players not play your game, which is basically losing somebody uh, in school. So game developers know this, and they don't like losing players in games, and they stop playing games. Future ahead, this was all about the risk. The conclusion of this talk is, can I roll just a, a short film? It's about three minutes, just to understand. All right, just about two minutes. This is what's happening in schools, with just the cable, all right? This is what's happening in schools in America. This is Valve, the developer of a, a really known game uh, called Half-Life 2. And they basically run this project where they invite students to participate in a game development classes where they learn how to design a game. seventh graders to use hammer and uh, design levels so we pretty much just wanted them to create a room that they made by themselves uh, there were three students per station and I think each station had a successful uh, test room that they could actually run around in um, they just really had a portal gun and a companion queue that they could throw around and toss between portals and everything seemed to work out and once they got in that level, I don't think I could teach them anything more. They were so excited about actually being able to play it and being something that they created that uh, that was pretty much the end of it. <laughs> so I just wanted to add maybe at the end of this movie, just this, this, this aha moment that this one teacher talks about. hammer and they created rooms and, and uh, they, they put some entities in them and then they compiled the maps and when those maps opened up and suddenly they were in game featuring the room that they had built the whole room was like oh my gosh they were so excited so excited and that was their aha moment our and I wanted to end with this this was their aha moment okay so getting game design into schools is really something that I'm, I will be working on and trying to get people more interested in. More interested in. So thank you for listening. My name is Bartosz Barlowski. OK, thank you for zooming in. This is my Twitter account. EduStudio.pl Video rozwiązania dla edukacji.